Voices from stone across continents, scattered across deserts, jungles, and windswept plains, rise the ancient stones, megaliths that have endured for millennia. Stonehenge in England, the great circles of Karnak in France, the dolmens of Korea, the monoliths of Easter Island, each carved and positioned by hands long vanished. Yet when researchers measure their vibrations, a curious pattern emerges. Many of these sites resonate at the same frequency, a deep humming tone around 110 hertz. Coincidence, or something more deliberate? Sound, after all, is not just heard, it is felt. It moves through air, earth, and even stone. In ancient temples, whispers can carry for meters, and certain chambers amplify chants into shivering echoes. The builders of these monuments seem to understand how stone responds to vibration, how a tone could turn a structure into a living instrument. Could it be that they used sound not as art, but as technology, to heal, to alter consciousness, or even to move the massive blocks themselves? At Malta's Hypogeum, a subterranean temple cut into limestone, visitors have reported voices resonating through the chambers as if the walls themselves were singing. Measurements show that at 110 hertz, the entire structure vibrates in harmony, amplifying the human voice in ways that induce trance-like sensations. Across the ocean, the stones of Tiwanaku in Bolivia align with acoustic focal points, and in Egypt's Great Pyramid, narrow shafts act like resonant tubes. Different cultures, different continents, yet the same frequency keeps returning, as though these builders were tuned to a universal note. Some physicists suggest the explanation is simple. Natural properties of stone and cavity size create these frequencies by chance. But others suspect that ancient engineers, observing the world through sound and rhythm, designed with intention. In their world, sound was sacred. Drums called down rain, chants opened rituals, and the word itself was seen as creation made audible. Perhaps these megaliths were not only monuments to gods or rulers, but vast instruments, places where voice, stone, and spirit converged. If that is true, then these stones are still speaking. Their song is low, patient, vibrating through centuries of silence. We may not yet understand the language, but as microphones and sensors uncover their subtle tones, we are reminded that technology is not always wires and circuits. Sometimes it is carved from the earth itself, and its memory endures in the hum of the world.